Hi, I'm Mike Christensen, and welcome to the Celebration Gallery, where we are going to do a quick walkthrough of the 14th edition of our annual Day of the Dead altar and art installation. So let's go check out some of the pieces. So this one was done uh, by Angel Walker and it's a community member. She is remembering her many, many family members. It's got all of the traditional altar elements. That's the Walker family. It's her first time doing one this year. Uh, Montez, Mendoza, and Young. We have another community altar here. And this is the Torres and Vigil family. This was done by Grace Torres. She was a participant last year. And uh, she has uh, recreated some of the things that she used last year and also added new pieces this year. Um, it's really great that we could have community members uh, be a part of the exhibition in addition to our uh, partners through schools and, and otherwise. This was an art installation, uh, the Butterfly sanction, Sanctuary, that was done by uh, third graders at Redwood Elementary. And that was one of Susan Clinker's Outrageous pr uh, programs that was conducted off site. The butterflies. And over here, we have a pre European, more indigenous example of an altar and this was done by Rosa Lopez and Oscar and uh, you'll see it's quite different from the other three-tiered altars that have more of the Catholic imagery in them again this is a more indigenous piece uh, for the a warrior uh, who is who has passed away and is being an altar being created to help them get to the other side uh, I, bo I believe the word is Miklan. It's a tree of life um, representation as well. Over here, we have an altar that is more of an art installation, but still on three tiers, done by Granger High School ceramics and 3D art students. And these are all. Uh, reflective of the life of Cesar Chavez, uh, the labor leader and activist, and students were asked to reflect upon uh, his experiences and reflect some of his messages and meanings through their work in ceramics. In this area right here, we have our reflection area where we invite visitors to come and uh, write messages to their deceased loved ones. Um, on this large skull here. Um, it's interactive so students or uh, parents or anyone can write messages to their deceased loved ones and then we paint it every year and it gets layers of layers upon messages and also the bulletin boards here where people can stop and reflect and make a nice note. These are some paintings that were done by Vicki Lowe. We're gonna talk about her again when we get to the Madeline Choir School uh, installment. Uh, this is a painting of her grandmother, uh, memories of her grandmother uh, during the Day of the Dead. Um, this installation over here is more of an art installation again. This is Cypress High School and you can see all of the students have made sugar skulls for members of their family. They've also all written short notes uh, to the de their deceased loved ones too on the sugar skull um, paper, uh, little folding paper. That's the art after school program at Cypress High School. Over here we have Salt Lake Community College's introduction to folklore class. Uh, Brittany Stevenson's students have participated for two years now. This year, 
They did a stylized altar honoring the victims of the tragic shooting in Las Vegas at the Jason Aldean concert. They've got a chip for every person who was injured, all 489, and then they've made flowers, or not flowers, but butterflies and images of the deceased, all 58, killed in that tragedy. They've also had poignant lyrics from the from Jason Aldean uh, written on this guitar that are uh, meaningful. Let's go this way. So over here we have one of our larger altar installations. This was done by Claudia Benitez uh, with the Mexican consulate Salt Lake City. And this is remembering a very beloved political cartoonist in Mexico, Eduardo Humberto del Rio Garcia, who just passed away this last August 2017. So you can see that she's got his uh, skeleton figure here with his gla reading glasses, his, his uh, pen and ink, you know, and his typewriter and also the caricatures that others had, have drawn of the political cartoonist, uh, remembering him as a beloved figure. We also have these signs that tell us what Day of the Dead is and what it isn't, which is all, always very helpful when we have student groups come through. It's a good starting place. This altar here, again, is coming back to Vicki Lowe and her students at the Madeline Choir School. Uh, this altar has been put together pretty traditionally um, noting that it was for victims of uh, recent natural disasters, um, hurricane, hurricanes and, and flooding. And we're glad that they could be a new partner with us. I might add as we're looking at all of the altars that the more traditional ones have the elements that you would normally see on, on, on an altar representative of earth, air, wire, and fodder, fi, earth, air, water, and fire. Candles representing fire, the Sempasuchil marigold flowers representing earth, uh, the papel picado uh, when blown, looking like wind or sounding like wind, and uh, glasses of water or even bottled water at times, you know, to quench the thirst of the traveling souls also decorated with the um, you know, food or beverage that the deceased would, would like during life to entice them to come back and visit. And we have a couple more here. So this is an installation by artist and educator Sonia Pence. Um, and it's called Ithaca, it was her MFA project. It's a really a non-traditional altar and more of an installation piece, but it describes the combination of um, memories she had as a child and also uh, her growing up and hearing stories of uh, people disappearing uh, in Uruguay, her home country, under the political dictatorship of her youth. And so that's an interesting juxtaposition and she states in her signage here that this is the uh, highest honor she can uh, personally offer to the 140 people who had disappeared during this time under that military dictatorship. Um, this is an altar that I actually put together um, my first effort. Uh, I had a close friend and actually a housemate of mine, Stephen Schaefer, who passed away last June. And one of our uh, partner groups weren't able to do the altar. And so I de decided that it might be an important thing for me to do, not only in terms of filling the space in the gallery, but per perhaps uh, something uh, meaningful for me to uh, take pause and put into practice um, what we talk about here in the gallery. <clears throat> These are some poster pieces. Oh, sorry. These are some poster pieces that were done by Salt Lake Community College uh, folklore students last year, and they uh, are little short narratives about different types of 
ways that different cultures remember their dead. So it might not necessarily be Day of the Dead, but it might be other things like, you know, Hungry Ghosts for Taoists and Buddhists, okay? Or King Ming, which is Chinese, right? In Rome, uh, the Obon Festival in Japan, uh, what they do in Korea. And over here, we have our final little area. And that is, we have a little screening room of a video that we keep on a loop, but it's called Calling Home the Dead. And it's a video that uh, takes us to Mexico where you would actually see families and communities uh, creating ofrendas uh, for their beloved ones outdoors in cemeteries and grave sites in truly a community way. The real context for where this kind of thing happens as opposed to recreating those situations in a gallery space like this or perhaps a museum. And that's our Day of the Dead Altar and Art Installation 2017. Thank you very much.